Hi everyone, welcome back to class. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about determinants and the singular matrices. So, our objectives are to talk about what the determinant is and how to write it down or calculate it, to state what the relationship is between the product of a matrix and its adjoint matrix. So we'll also mention briefly what the adjoint matrix is. We'll talk about how to differentiate between singular and non-singular matrices. And we're going to solve some simple problems related to singular matrices. So let's jump right in and talk about what the determinant is. First up, only square matrices have determinants. If it's not a square matrix, it will not have a determinant. So a determin the determinant is a special number that is related to square matrices. And that number is used extensively in linear algebra to solve systems of equations. That's really what we use it for. It has no other um, major purpose outside of that. It has a lot of use in engineering and other, other fields like those, but primarily it is just used to write down the solutions to systems of equations with linear algebra. So how do we find it? To find the determinant of a matrix, and in our case, we are looking only at two by two matrices. We are going to look at a matrix A such that A is equal to A, B, C, D. These are its elements. And to find the, the determinant of the matrix A, we can either write DET A, D E T, capital A, or A in, bracket, in those brackets like that. And it's equal to the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal, which is A, D minus B, C. And this is only for two by two matrices. Now, if we wanted to write down the determinant of these matrices, what we, all that we do is simply follow this simple principle. So the, de the determinant of W, um, let's write down that. So the determinant of W would simply be the product of these two minus the product of that two. So it's negative three sine theta minus nine times zero, which simply gives us negative three sine theta. That's what it is. This is the determinant. The determinant of x, I'm going to use this one. We can use either det, det um, matrix name or this one, whichever one you want to write is equal to the product of these two minus the product of that two. So two times a minus seven b. We have written it down. That's it. Um, determinant of v. So we can say determinant of matrix v is equal to these two x times three x, which gives us three x square minus two times two y, which gives us minus for y. So it's pretty simple to write down a determinant. In this case here, we're going to talk about, um, given that t is this matrix, 8, half, negative 4, 1, show that the determinant is thin. We find the determinant by saying the determinant of t is equal to 8 times 1 minus negative 4, times a half. So a times one minus negative four times a half. Now eight times one is eight minus negative four times a half is negative two. And so we have eight minus negative two, which gives us eight plus two, which is 10. And so we have shown that the determinant of t is 10. So it's pretty simple to write down a determinant. You Take the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal, AD minus BC, and that gives you your determinant. Now, the relationship between a matrix and its adjoint. Now, what exactly is the adjoint matrix? If you should, if you should take a matrix A, A, B, C, D, and rearrange the matrix so that you rearrange the elements on the main diagonal, switch their, their positions. So the D goes here, 
and the A goes here. As you see it, we switch those two positions and change the signs of the other two elements. And again, we're talking about only two by two matrices because this is the focus of CXE um, for CSEC purposes. So we switch the elements on the main diagonal, switch their positions, so AD becomes DA, and we change the signs of these two so that B becomes minus B and C becomes minus C. Whatever it is, we change the sign. So let's talk about that now. So given that B is this matrix, we want to first write down the determinant of B. So let's do that. So answer in part one, determinant of B is going to be one times seven minus two times negative three, which gives us seven minus negative six, which gives us 13. And so next thing, we're going to write down the adjoint of B. Notice the ADJ, which represents the adjoint. So if you see B adj, it means the adjoint of B. So B adj, B adjoint, part two, is going to be, ADJ is going to be, we're going to take that matrix, switch these two. So one seven becomes seven one. And negative three, two becomes positive three, negative two. So we change the signs of those. So the seven goes up here, the one goes down here. This is positive, it becomes negative. And this is negative, so it becomes positive. So here's our adjoint matrix for B. And now we want to calculate the matrix product B times B adj. Now seven, let's take B. B is B times B adj. Let's fix that and write it properly. A D J, very good now, is equal to one, negative three to seven, multiplied by seven, three, negative two, one. So let's do our multiplication. So remember it's row times column. So it's one times seven gives us seven. One times seven is seven. Plus negative three times negative two gives us positive six. And this row times that row, one times three is three. Plus three times negative one is negative three. Negative three times one rather is negative three. And now we're going to take this row and multiply here. Two times seven, that gives us 14. Plus seven times negative two gives us negative 14. And two times three gives us six plus seven times one, which gives us seven. And looking at it, what we get is seven plus six is 13. Three plus negative three is zero. Negative 14 plus negative 14 is zero. And six plus seven is 13. So what do we get when we multiply the matrix by its adjoint? Um, take a look at what we got here when we find, when we found the determinant. No, the determinant of the matrix B was 13. And when we multiply the matrix by its adjoint, we end up with 13 on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. So we get a diagonal matrix with 13 on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And that 13 is the same as the determinant of the matrix. So if you should multiply a matrix by its adjoint, what you're going to get is a matrix with the determinant along the main diagonal. And that is essentially the relationship. All two by two matrices, as long as you can find the determinant for it, when you multiply the matrix by its adjoint, you will get the the, the determinant along the main diagonal and zero everywhere else. So essentially you get a diagonal matrix with the determinant on the main diagonal. That's what it is. And um, adjoint matrices, again, are only defined for square matrices and non-zero matrices. A non-zero matrix wouldn't have a determinant. Um, well, it would have a determinant, it would have, but that determinant would be zero. All right.
No, let's talk some more about that. So singular matrices are some special types of matrices that have a zero determinant. Um, they cause a lot of problems in solving systems of linear equations. And when they do pop up, those systems have no solutions at all. So mathematicians are always on the lookout for a matrix that may be singular because if it is, um, you will not be able to find any unique solutions for any system of equations that is contained in it. So here we have two matrices. We have matrix R and we have matrix T. We want to write down the determinant of both. So the, the determinant of matrix R is going to be, remember, we take the product of the main diagonal, 4 times 3, and subtract the product of the minor diagonal, 6 times 2. And that gives us 12 minus 12, which is 0. That tells us that matrix R is singular. Now, if a matrix is not singular, it doesn't mean that it's plural. We use this term. We use non-singular to represent it. So it's either singular or non-singular, or singular or not singular. Um, so matrix R is singular. Let's look at matrix T. The determinant of T is going to be 5 times 0 minus 2 times negative 1. So we end up with here 0 minus negative 2, which gives us, which gives us a positive 2. So the, the, the determinant of matrix T is 2. So T is a non-singular matrix. And this question has pop up on CXE sometimes where it asks you to show that a matrix is non-singular. And um, the way to show that it's non-singular is simply, simply to calculate the determinant. So let's calculate the determinant here. So the determinant of B is going to be 7 times 1 minus 2 times negative 3, which gives us 7 minus negative 6, um, which gives us 13. And because the determinant is 13, we can say, therefore, B is non-singular just by taking advantage of the definition so a singular matrix has a zero determinant we will talk more about them and a matrix with a non-zero determinant is called non-singular all right singular matrices give us some unique opportunities to solve equations and to do some really cool stuff with them. So for example, given that n is this, write down the determinant of n in terms of k. We can write down the determinant, remember the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. So we say the determinant of n is equal to 4k minus 3 times 2 is 6. So it's 4k minus 3 times 2, which gives us 4k minus 6. That is, the, that, that is the answer to part A. This is the determinant of matrix N. Now it says, given that N is singular, calculate the value of k. Now if N is singular, what it means, therefore, is that the determinant is equal to 0. So we can equate this to 0 because we know that its determinant is 0. And once we do that, we get a nice linear equation that we can work out. So we can say now 4k is equal to 0 plus 6. So we get 4k to be equal to 6. And therefore, k is equal to 6 divided by 4, which is 1 and a half. So k is 1.5. So we can do these things with singular matrices. We can also do other stuff with singular matrices, such as state the determinant of, of, of m. Let's do that. The determinant of M is equal to 3A minus B. And now that we've done that, we can write pairs of values for A and B that can make M singular, except for 0, 0. Again, these are questions that have popped up on CXE, CXE papers before. So if we have 
that 3a minus b is equal to 0 since it's singular. And we want pairs of values that will make the matrix M singular. Then we want numbers for A and B. It's pretty, except for 0, 0, because obviously that will work. 3 times 0 minus 0 gives us 0. What we do is that we pick numbers. So let's start with B. Let's say if B is 1. If B is 1, then what number can we use for A? Then 3B minus 1 equals 0. So we can solve that. 3B is equal to 1, and then B is equal to 1 third. I mean, A is equal to 1 third, so we could choose that, that pair. Let's say B is equal to 3. If B is equal to 3, then 3A minus 3 equals 0. And therefore, 3A is equal to 3, so A is equal to 1. What if you pick B to be 6? Then 3A minus 6 is equal to 0, which means that 3A is equal to 6, and A is equal to 6 over 3, which is 2. So we can continue to write infinitely many possibilities. The question asks for up here. So we could simply have stopped here and end it there, but I'm just showing you how you could actually create multiple pairs of values that would actually make this singular. Now let's look at the last part. Um, we can also do this with, with singular matrices, which is, which is quite cool as well. So let's take this matrix 2Q, this matrix T, which is equal to 2Q0, P and P, and state the determinant of, of matrix T. So the determinant of T is going to be 2Q times P minus P times 0, which gives us 2PQ. That's part A. And having done that, we can answer some other questions, such as, if Q is equal to a half and P equal 4, then what is the value of the determinant? So P, Q is a half and P is 4. So we have 2PQ now being equal to 2 times P, which is 4, times a half. And doing that calculation, a half of 4 is 2. So 2 times 2 gives us 4. So the, the value of the determinant of T would be 4 if we substituted these. These are nice little things that we can do with um, singular matrices. So let's recap quickly. To find the determinant of a matrix, what we do is that we take the product of the main diagonal and minus the product of the minor diagonal. So in this case, 2 times A minus 7 times B, or in this case, A times 1 minus negative 4 times a half. That's how we find the determinant. If we multiply a matrix by its adjoint matrix, what you will get is a matrix that has the determinant on the main diagonal and zero everywhere else. And a matrix is singular if its determinant is zero. If the determinant is not zero, then we call it non-singular. And we can use singular matrices to make up equations and solve them to find pairs of values that would make them singular or to substitute particular values in them depending on how we create them and so to create different kinds of equations on problems. This is how we find in um, singular matrices. This is how we find determinants. I hope you would have learned um, and understood while watching it. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe.